Hi everyone, I'm Vardha Sharma, editor news band, daily English newspaper of Navi Mumbai. To, today we have with us uh, Ms. Bina Lashkari, who is one of the co-founders of Doorstep School, which is a non-profit organization with a mission to educate children living in the slums, streets, and also children from the most marginalized communities. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce and welcome Ms. Bina Shilashkari. Hi, Bina. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much, Varda. It was so nice of to connect with you. Yes, uh, Bina. So the first question is, why did you think of starting this initiative? And uh, what prompted or what made you to do this? Okay. Uh, so, Varda, it's a really good start. Let me tell you, uh, this is the story. Uh, it's a long journey. And uh, it is almost around 32 years we completed uh, of this organization. It was in 1988 when I was a student. I was placed into one of the municipal school. And I was given a big list of children who were dropout. It was a municipal school and there was a big list of dropouts. So while uh, doing this dropout visit, I came across large number of students who are not enrolled also. So besides dropout, there was a many children who were now out of school. The reason what I found out at that time, that mostly these children were actually working. They were working on docks, they were working as a rack pickers, and they were working and doing many more jobs which they need to support their family. So this was the children in the age group of 7 to uh, 14 years. So when I was talking to the students, these children, they told that, Didi, it is not possible for us to go to the school because school timings are too long and it is not suitable to us. And we are working uh, for the whole day and we need to work because the family has been migrant to uh, Mumbai for the work. And the children has come with them to support the family. And some of them were without family who were also by their own. So basically, the socio-economical condition of these children was so bad and so poor that they need to work and they need to survive. So when I spoke to them, the students, that if so then they said ki didi humko padna hai but hamari situation circumstances are so bad that we cannot go to the school so i said if i will teach you will you come to the my uh, to my to me they said yes yes why not you know they were very happily and very smiling face ki yes yes didi hum aayenge aapse you know aapke paas so <laughs> i'm sorry so that was the first beginning when i realized that this is the only small group which I'm interacting, but there are so many other children who might be needed this kind of service. And the very first thought has come, if children cannot go to the school, the school should go to the children. So this is how we have an organization named Doorstep School. So wherever we find children, the school start over there and there. And this is how we have actually been reaching out to the various uh, different uh, sets of children in a city, in a, uh, in a village, in a many more places. So uh, like this is the basic concept of the children. If they cannot go to the school, the school will go to them. And this is so, how the beginning of the doorstep school. Like in any other NGOs, your program or your initiative must have also faced many challenges. So how did you, you overcome those that? challenges? Your voice is not coming very clearly, Varga. I said, uh, uh, your, like any other NGOs, your educational yes. program must have also faced many challenges. So how yes. did you overcome those? Uh, the very first challenge is like the parents were not allowing their children to come to the school because they said that uh, we will be uh, like putting these children in a school and we will not allow them to go for a work. And they are depend on their uh, livelihood, you know, like this uh, children for money was very important for them. So that was a very big resistance we face into the beginning where uh, they were not uh, sending the children. And even when we go and ask the children and we do the follow up, they used to run away. 
यू नो दे यूज टू हाइड कि बच्चे है ही नहीं हमारे घर में कोई बच्चे ही नहीं है यू नो लाइक दैट देवर रियली बीन नॉट अलाउविंग द चिल्ड्रन टू कम but there was a few children who were interested and they were coming by their own those kids were the very first which we have made a very successful story and presented to the many more uh, parents that see if the, your children will be learning he will be like this and let me tell us we had a we have to be very do a lot of uh, uh, home visit and counseling of uh, uh, parents by saying that we don't want to lose out your children from this uh, working condition work uh, workforce because we understand that you are here for the earning not for the uh, priority is not education so we have we have told that we will take their uh, children into the free time when they are free and they can come to our class and let me tell you whether we were very clear from the day one that we have not aimed very big for this kids in the beginning because we know that this kids will not be able to complete even the uh, schooling and not go to the further education so the beginning has made very small like we will teach them reading and writing and we have told the uh, parents ki hum uh, we will tell, teach you so much that your children not been actually uh, exploited and he will not be cheated by anyone and he can read the newspaper he can read the only small uh, bus number and like that and don't be, you won't believe it that was the very first uh, girl who completed her reading writing and she came immediately and asked ki didi aaj hamari uh, uh, bandar pe we have cleaned the prawns around 4 to 5 kg and my person weekly they were paying weekly and he just wrote the 2 2 kg तो मैंने उसको इमीजिएटली बोला कि भैया आप गलत लिख रहे हो यू नो सो उसने बोला किधर सीखा तूने तेरे को क्या मालूम यू नो सो आई दिस वाज द काइंड ऑफ अ स्मॉल बिगिनिंग एंड स्मॉल अचीवमेंट व्हिच वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद and this is how the we put forward to the parents ki dekho today a small reading and writing of the number also has helped the your child to be not exploited you know so he could really earn more because of this literacy mm -hmm. <coughs> so this was the very first challenge there was a beside many more challenge because see the community which we are dealing right now most of them are tribal they are banjara community and there are many more different kind of uh, rag pickers and all this thing those kids were actually very difficult to stay at one place you know like they are they have a very small uh, attention span within a 15 20 minutes they run away so we have to really design our curriculum in a such a way that they should be sustained in a class at least for a two hours so that was a uh, introducing a different kind of curriculum a content where the children can uh, sustain and they can int interested and motivated to come to the class so that was another challenge because simply teaching uh, reading and writing would will, would have not help us mm -hmm. you know we need to introduce the song and the storytelling and the games and many more thing and beyond all this thing it is totally a kind of a, a teaching learning much games you know which we have introduced and child while playing only he understood that he is learning you know so this is the kind of we have to design the curriculum all this thing which is uh, on educational problem but there are many more challenges like the space in a mumbai the space is a big issue you know like uh, even in a slum you will not find a single small space to bring the children together so that was a big issue like people were not ready they said ke hum log uski jagah kha jayenge you know like it's in a slum so it was a very difficult for us to get a space to make these children to sit and that also we had tried our best with the uh, networking with the local committees and local mandals and then we have got a some space but the space problem with the street children we had a very uh, difficult at that time because we were running a class on a, a witty station and it was on to the church gate station and apollo bandar and many more places street children you know but we were found and we were running a classes for them and there was a lot of disturbance so to solve that place problem we have introduced school on wheel you know this is the mobile school uh, can you hear me yes yes i think your network is gone no no it's yeah, fine okay it's fine yeah okay so this is a mobile school which has a which is a bus designed like a classroom and we take this bus to the different places where we find the children so in a day we have we are covering four location and each location we bring the 20 to 25 students in the class we teach them it is like a totally classroom you know you when you will visit you will know that there is no there is no kind of a bench and uh, like that it is very small place but very beautifully designed like a classroom so we uh, for the street children we have a school on wheel uh, problem which we have solved by that and this is doing so well that right we started into i think 20 years back one 
one school on wheel. Now we have uh, around seven in uh, eight in uh, Mumbai and around uh, eight uh, to ten in uh, Pune. So like that, you have we have a lot of mobile school to solve the problem of space. <coughs> Another problem what we had for face, I'll just go with that, you know, uh, with the challenges and how do we solve the challenges. Yes, yes, yes. So there was a very, we when we came across a large number of students who were out of school, we thought that we don't want many more children to be illiterate and out of school. So we have introduced the pre-primary program. You know, Varda, in India, the pre-primary program is very weak, which is run by the government. There is an ICDS, but that ICDS uh, does serve the purpose of uh, nutrition and the health. Education is hardly been given through this ICDS pro program. Now they are focusing on it, but in the 20, 30 years back, there was no ICDS into the city also, you know, in Mumbai. So basically, we have introduced the pre-primary program because we want to catch these children young and to put them in a school. We don't want to run the parallel school. We want that children should go to the school at the young age and the right age. So then we can really take care of those kids who are going in a school and only out of school children been taken care by the doorstep school. So what we did, we have started the pre-primary centers and immediately uh, started talking to the discouraging parents to take the children to the workplace. So those kids were automatically detached from their workplace and we have started enrolling them into the regular school, formal school. So that was a big issue because these kids getting into formal school, again, there was a challenge at the formal school because they didn't have any documents, no birth certificate, no other card at that time, no documents. So formal school also had a tough time that how do we enroll? How do we know that he's completed six years or seven years? So we have to again work with the government and to tell them that please uh, consider these children need and they are born at home or either village. So it is very difficult for them to have a, this kind of a birth certificate. But that time also with the networking and advocating with government, we have allowed these kids and enroll this kid by doing the affidavit and all this kind of a documents. So that was the also a big challenge to putting the children into formal school. It doesn't uh, stop that. After the children put into the school, we found many children were dropping out because they were the first generation learner. So they were finding very difficult to be fit into the classroom. Even teacher also was finding difficult because they were not understanding what they are talking because there is a multi-language. In Bombay, you will find all the different language children going into Hindi Marathi school. So there was a lot of issues and children were not learning. So parents came back and they said, Keep my child goes to the school six hours and still he doesn't know reading and writing. I would prefer my child come to the U, you know, come to our class. So I said, I'm sorry, we are not running a formal school and we cannot take care of children the entire schooling. So we have started working with the government school. What we did, we found out the, we did a need assessment and what are the issues with the government school. We found that there are slow learner children and there are children who are finding difficult. They need uh, to have a special uh, attention and special time for it. So we started with the remedial class for this kid and we have started giving them extra coaching after and before their schooling in the school. Besides that, we also have taken up the reading program because the kids who are actually knowing the uh, language but not been developing language very well because there was no access to their reading into their house. They don't have a newspaper, they don't have a books. So we have began with the reading program. Now, after doing this also, we realized that there are still children in a regular class are finding difficult to read at the fourth and fifth grade. You know, there are many such research has been come out, come up, and they are saying the children are pass out till the fifth and seventh grade by not knowing reading and writing. You know, that kind of research is already out. So the same problem we faced in the past, and we thought that if the children are just moving with the without knowing anything, it's a big dangerous to the education system and to the for the child because he's spending so much time, but he doesn't still doesn't know how to read and write. So we have started the foundational literacy and numeracy program, which is now introduced by the Nipun Bharat, which is FLN program which we are doing since more than 15 years now, actually, into government school. So for the first and second standard, we have taken up the basic foundational literacy and to see that child should be really be, uh, foundation should be created very well and solid. So he can really go a third and fourth very smoothly. So this is what we have introduced the program, uh, kind of uh, foundational literacy and numeracy program. 
After that, we also came across a large other issues, which has been under uh, not under our control with the municipal school, with the uh, kind of a, with the child and the family. So we did start with the mental health pro program also because we found that there is children need some kind of counseling. They are coming from broken home, domestic violence and many more problems into the slum. <coughs> so this was the thing which we have been come up with the school partnership program package. So, so uh, as I told you in the... How many... Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, sorry to interrupt. Well, I wanted to know, like, what is the strength of the teachers and how many students have been impacted so far? Children have been impacted okay. so far. So right now, right now we have a more than uh, 150 teachers in Mumbai and more than 250 teachers in Pune. And we are reaching out more than one lakh students, which is in the community, in a school on wheel and into the formal school. So that's, this is the kind incredible. of strength right now we have. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, basically, in fact, uh, I would say that we are, today is being a woman day. I would take a proud that we have a, most of the teachers are women teachers. Oh, very and nice. they are actually, and, and they are basically the local women, you know, they are from the slum community and nearby area. And they are, they are as a, they had come as a woman, but then we have made them a teacher. You know, because they are not the BA and MA degree, let me tell you, because those kind of teachers find very difficult to set into the slums and the area where we work. So we have made the teachers. So most of the teachers are the uh, local women who we found that they are interested into teaching and they have a capacity and skills. And we have been having a training very regularly in a year, around 20 to 30 days training for those teachers to make them a teacher. Yeah. And we have a teacher since now 20 years. So basically, I would say that we are very proud to say that we are with the children. We have a lot of women empowerment program also with the doorstep school. Uh, and so, what about the funding? So how do you manage uh, these programs? Yeah. So basically, in the past, it was an institutional donor, an individual donor and family trust like that. But now that fortunately, since past five years, three years, we have a lot of CSR fund, you know, like, uh, you know, the CSR fund has been actually meant for this. So we are lucky to have a lot of CSR fund uh, right now. So there are many big companies. I, there is a list of it, actually speaking. Yes. So uh, there, there are many more who are been and we are very fortunate that people are continuing our, uh, their support with us. And it's going on so well since so many years. Because 32 years we have completed now almost. So basically, without fund, definitely you cannot yeah. run this show. True. So we have a, we are fortunate and we are very lucky to have a, a companies and trust and individuals who have actually come forward and, and supporting us since long. So all this uh, fund is a total donation. Okay. And run on to that program. Uh, so and we would also like to know if there are any success stories. I know which, ah. is, yeah. So if you can just tell yes. us, but as a few, so that you know it has impacted the lives of the children as well as of the families. Sure. See, uh, there are but the success stories is many. Let me tell you because it is now third generation, three decades we are working with the kids. The very first generation to whom I was teaching, their children are double graduate. And there are many children who are the next batch are the doctor, chartered accountant, and many more. But there are two success stories I can definitely right now tell you. There is a girl named Fatima. Uh, she was a, a student of non-formal education. And uh, it was a very difficult coming from the Muslim family. They were not allowing her to come to the school also, not to the my our classroom. But not, they were very difficult for her to because she didn't have a father. So it was very difficult for her to really come to the school. But our efforts were so many years that she had completed master in social work. And she has been now uh, working with the government of India. And she just re uh, recently have joined the, uh, with the uh, anti-trafficking movement. You know, okay. so that is a Fatima Mullah is one of the stories. We have a, another of our students who are actually a very successful teachers. Uh, there, are, there is a one person, like I don't know whether you know Ashok, uh, uh, Ashok Rathod, who is actually running Oscar Foundation. Uh, he's also uh, one of our students. There is a, uh, there is a many, Dilip also is there. Uh, I just recently met one of my students who is a, uh, what is his name? One minute. Uh, who is this? Mohan, Mohan uh, what is a famous uh, South Indian hero? So he had uh, that role model and he just met me two days back and he was saying that Didi, I'm pursuing my uh, uh, chemistry and the uh, PCB because he wants to go for a science and the uh, doctor, but he's very much interested into the acting. Okay. 
So I was wondering, I said, Are, how can you are trying to? He said, no, no, I have learned from doorstep school that you should have a backup plan. You know, <laughs> so I want to complete my education and I also wanted to continue my uh, interest into my uh, hobby, you know, like this. So there are, I would say, when I interact with the kids, we have a large number of balsam who are our ex-students. Okay. And to them, we give a lot of uh, uh, life skill program and career guidance and many more things. And to, through that, we are in touch with them and we come across every year around uh, 10 to 20 children who are achievers. You know, uh, I would I would really say one thing that we have done in the past one uh, for the achievers, we have taken up the one naming street um, uh, kind of initiative. We have named the street of the slums and of the road by our achievers children. Because we found that when there is a street are being named by those who are the very big people, why not these kids? Because they are also coming from such a big uh, difficulties and doing so well. So this is naming street. I have a link. I will send you those link also yes, of that yes, naming street. Definitely. And the, like that, we are trying our best to see that wherever the doorstep school has a good achievers, we acknowledge them by a different way. But there are endless stories. There are I many missed. more Gita, Sudha, many, many, many stories are there. Really, uh, what are your future plans? How do you plan to expand your initiative? So, see, uh, uh, as such, we are definitely in the education for underprivileged children. And we wanted to reach out many more children and to work to see that, see, there is a difference. Definitely, the education has brought a lot of difference, which we could see that, you know, it is a really making a sense of those kids who have never been to the school. So what we wanted to take this, this education to be a powerful tool to change the society and to change the generation. So we are actually been uh, working into the rural part of India because there we find the many more children are migrating because not a good schooling and not a good education. So that is why we are actually been now focusing more into the rural India and seeing that the foundation literacy numeracy program, which we are running since very successfully, the, those programs should reach out to each child into the India and especially to the rural India because there the children are going through a very bad time. I mean, to say, I don't want to say that government has provided a very good infrastructures and teachers, but then also they need some support system. Let me tell you, they, that is not enough. I, I really don't want to uh, blame anyone. Everyone's trying their best. But circumstance of children and the parents are so, so that they need extra support to really improve their quality of education. So we wanted to work more into the quality of education and value education of these kids who are um, really away from the work, uh, away from the education. Sector. And in Navi Mumbai and also in adjoining areas, where exactly are you located? And so that if some more children want to enroll in these programs. Uh, see, basically, we have started this organ uh, work from the urban uh, poor children, but now we have also been found many more into the on the street, which we have tried to cover through the school on wheel. But now we are finding a lot of requests coming from the uh, rural part of India. You know, like for teachers training, recently we have uh, trained 3,000 teachers of the government of Maharashtra and we have been seriously reach out to more than 80 to 90,000 uh, children. So the teachers training also we wanted to focus more because through that we can go more and more children. But we found a large number of students into rural part where they really need a lot of focus and we might go and work with them. And school on wheel also is a really very uh, big requirement coming up from the different parts of the India. So that is the two projects which we really would like to focus and go ahead and see that we can really help the uh, NGOs or to the government and to see that we can help into the improving the quality and accessing to the each child the education. Thank you so much for joining us and we wish you Thank all you. the best for your future NGO. Sure, sure. Thank you. So Varda, we, we are in a Mumbai, uh, very much into the uh, South Mumbai, but in the Mumbai, we are also reaching out to the Sanjay Gandhi National Park uh, uh, tribal children. Then we have a new Mumbai, which we have just come across the school on wheel, which is a very uh, children working with the markets. So like that, there are different profile of children. And I would really like to appeal the people wherever you find children and you, you want that we want to start this school, please approach us. Please write us because sometimes there is a hidden group. We also were not able to find out where are the children. So this is my open appeal to every citizen of India that wherever you find children and you find that we can help them out, uh, please contact us. We are ready to start the school for the kid. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.